from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Welcome. <laughs> Okay, great. So I'm Pam Jackson. I'm director for the Center for the Book here at the Library of Congress. And we are part of the new national and international outreach unit that's been created. We welcome you here tonight. And just want to mention a little bit about the Library of Congress, and then I'll introduce our, the, the uh, individuals that will be the next individual who will be participating in our program. And I feel like I'm too close to the microphone. <laughs> so a part of our vision here at the library is that we are the chief steward of the record of knowledge for America and the world, thus creating a springboard to the future. And the future I hope to see is one of compassion and courage, industry and innovation, remarkable accomplishment, achievement, one of peace and harmony some of which is discussed in the poems that we'll be hearing, perhaps we'll be hearing from tonight. A part of the library's central mission is to provide the American people with a rich, diverse, and enduring source of knowledge that can be relied upon to inform, inspire, and engage, and to support intellectual and creative endeavors. And tonight, we have an opportunity to enjoy a very special creative endeavor with this spotlight on Native writers. This evening's event is sponsored with the library's Asian Division and the Poetry and Literature Center. And to find out more about both, we do invite you to visit us on the web at loc.gov slash rr slash Asian for the Asian Division and www.loc.gov slash poetry. Today is the third annual event we've held in conjunction with literary, literary magazine Manoa, a Pacific Journal inter, of International Writing, launched in 1989. Manoa brings the literature of Asia, the Pacific, and the Americas to English-speaking readers. To date, the journal has published over 50 volumes of about 10,000 pages, and over 1,200 writers, translators, reviewers and editors have participated in those publications. To find out more, yeah. <laughs> to find out more about that journal, please visit their website at manoajournal.hawaii.edu. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Manoa series editor Frank Stewart for his tireless efforts to bring world-class writers and writing to the Library of Congress. With Frank's help, we have focused on the literature of Okinawa and Singapore, and tonight we turn to Korea. We could not have a better duo of literary exemplars than Ko Un and brother Anthony, and on behalf of the Center for the Book and the Poetry and Literature Center, I want to thank both of you for traveling halfway around the world to be here tonight. Thank you so much. A quick word about our event. For the opening hour or so, Ko Un will read his poems and Brother Anthony will provide translations. Afterwards, Frank Stewart will lead a short moderated discussion. Before we do begin, though, I'd like to ask you to check that your uh, phones and devices, tablets are turned to silent so that they may not interfere with the recording of the program. And then I'll turn to um, the next person on our agenda. Helena Zinkum will explain how tonight's program highlights the activities of the library's collections and services division. And a little bit about Helena. Who, she is the Director for Collections and Services and the Chief of Prints and Photographs Division for the Library of Congress. And where we have 15 million images available for research with more than 1 million online. 
at www.loc.gov slash pictures. And I have to mention this, Helena fell in love with pictures while she was working at the Maryland Historical Society, which was some number of years before. She's been at the library for quite a while and is one of our most premier experts. And personally, she is a friend, one of the most beautiful people I know here in the library, who's also an extraordinary scholar and expert. Please welcome her, Helena Zinkum. everyone. Can you hear well enough? Yes. All right. <clears throat> As the library's director for collections and services, I'd like to offer you a quick profile of our treasured holdings and our world-renowned research guidance. Founded in 1800, so that makes us, what, 216 years old and going strong, we're the oldest federal cultural institution in the United States. And I think that's quite an honor for a library, right? Uh, it shows the value of our whole country for knowledge and learning, not something that's <coughs> obvious every day in our newspapers. But tonight, we're here to celebrate the long, long traditions of culture that the world has known and the creative inspiration. Despite our name, which of course includes the word Congress, and that is our primary service point, um, I would hope you come away from this evening thinking of us as America's Library, the National Library of the United States. We're the stewards for an estimated 160 million items, more than 450 languages. Have you ever thought about that before? More than 450. Well, of course, there are a lot of printed books, around 24 million, but also electronic databases manuscripts and maps, movies and music. Pam mentioned the wonderful photographs, but also sound recordings. How many miles of shelving do you think that all takes? I had to look it up, but it turned out to be 848. I think we could drive back and forth to New York City many times if we lined all the books up along the highway. Last year, we responded to almost half a million reference requests and we recorded almost 80 million visits to our website. You heard Pam mention many URL or web addresses, and that's, of course, because many people are not as fortunate as this evening, where you can come in person to the library and hear the wonderful presentation. So actually, an awful lot of our service is now online, outreaching to the whole world. You don't have to be an American citizen. You don't even have to live in the United States. We'll try to answer your questions. The statistics might impress you with their size, and we are known as the largest library in the world. But what really matters, of course, is content and quality. We're fortunate enough to have many units filled with subject matter experts. And they provide reference guidance and also insights into these massive collections. So don't let scale slow you down. There are actually people here, a human interface as well as an electronic ready to answer questions or spark new ideas, even if you don't answer the, ask the question. We'll check in. Is there something you'd like to know about? Of particular interest this evening, of course, are the international study areas, which focus on specific regions of the world. We have four, European, Hispanic, African, Middle East, and the topic this evening, Asian division. The Asian division is a prime example of the kind of specialization that emphasizes works written in the vernacular languages. For the case of Asian division, that includes China, of course, Japan, India, Southeast Asia, and Korea. Let's take a closer look at the Korean collections, and I hope if you don't already have the handout, it's out by the display. Please be sure to pick up a copy this evening. The Korean collections are known as the largest, but as importantly, the most comprehensive assemblage of Korean language materials outside of East Asia. While the holdings do consist primarily of works from the 20th and 21st centuries, a number of important pre-19th century publications are included. And it really tickles me that we express it that way, before the 1800s. Well, let's try publications from 1421. <laughs> 
that were made with metable, movable type before Gutenberg printed his Bible in Europe. So a fabulous collection. As of today, a few more numbers, 303,000 books in the Korean collection, more than 7,600 periodical or magazine titles, and that includes everything from the major magazines to government reports and the scholarly or academic journals. In addition, our Korean team has assembled more than 2,500 reels of microfilm so that you can have access to 250 different newspapers. Some of these numbers still just blow me away. <laughs> One country, Korea, 250 different newspapers, and all those opinions and perspectives can be seen here in the Library of Congress. Uh, and the microfilm is going back as far as the 1920s with those newspapers, and so of course representing the Korean diaspora. In terms of subject matter coverage, the Korean collection compromises many topics, history, literature, economy, technology, religion, and the arts. And we're also beginning to get more digitized content out. So through the World Digital Library, we've begun to put some Korean books out onto the internet. Apropos of tonight's presentation, however, I'm pleased to point out that the Library of Congress has a significant collection of publications by our esteemed, and it turns out quite prolific speaker, Ko Un. Would you like to estimate? 247. I should have said that into the microphone, but it's worth repeating anyway. 247 works here in the Library of Congress. I think that's astonishing. <laughs> Specialists from the Asian Division have organized a sample display, tip of the iceberg, but aren't the covers of the books beautiful? And I understood you made some of the paintings yourself. Uh, just lovely. So we are honored this evening to have Koun, as well as Brother Anthony, with us today. They are the living embodiment of that rich, diverse, and enduring source of knowledge that Pam spoke of and that we seek to provide. The poetry we hear tonight will surely inform, inspire, and engage. We can't say that too often. Libraries are so often thought of as factual, nonfiction, the truth, the whole truth. But the reality is we love literature. We adore poetry. Rob Casper is here this evening, many others from the Poetry Center. The creative, imaginative side of life is just as important for our future. Thank you. Um, I think I have to start. Um, I have to start by saying my voice is in an unstable condition. We'll see how it goes. Uh, my name is Brother Anthony, and with Ko Un, we are, and then with Frank, we are going to uh, have this reading with you. And um, I don't want to spend much time. Uh, there's lots to be done. Uh, it's impossible to really introduce a poet who has published something like 155 books and who is now in his 84th year, um, in a few words, when you go out you will find a handout, a printed text, two pages summarizing uh, the story of his life and his poetic career, which I prepared, and also a guide to publications uh, in English and um, home pages and so on. So you can uh, look at that at leisure <coughs> to learn about Cohen. Um, at the start of this reading also, I have asked Frank Stewart, the general editor of Manoa, uh, to read the first section of poems, the poems which were published in the recent edition of Manoa dedicated to uh, Korean poetry, which I helped guest edit. Uh, copies are outside, uh, so it seemed only fit that he should read <coughs> the English of these poems. Um, so, uh, before anything else, uh, you see, Koen has lived through the Japanese colonial period, the um, 
then the departure of the Japanese, followed by the Korean War, Korean War followed by the modernizing period, which was dominated by uh, regimes of dictatorship involved in the whole struggle for uh, democratization and for basic human rights. Uh, but he has always been, from the very start, essentially a poet. And so this evening we're going to be listening to poetry. And now to start the event, uh, ko -un is going to uh, say a few words. And I will translate. Good evening. Ah, how good I'm going to In Persia, poets are venerated as gods or saints. Hafez al-Assad and Rumi are that kind of divine poet. In the United States or Korea, a poet is simply a poet. Kuruna Bigushin was a hutamon, Biguge, Kukpue, Kopagum Ganon, Biguk Jungshine, Persang is you. Hirman is sin, hutamon, Chetue, Bigushinirago, Yetran Jogi, Isimida. If an Udean sinner, Nan, Kue Kukjok was Hanganopsi, she Harabojiro, Yogigo Isimida. Yet the American poet. Walt Whitman embodies the American spirit to such an extent that he's regarded <coughs> as one of the founding fathers in terms of spirit. Herman Hesse once praised Whitman as the first American poet. I take a great poet like him as one of the grandfathers of poetry, irrespective of nationality. <laughs> Philippa Chiligoleya, Leaves of Grass is the only collection Whitman left, while I, who belong to a much later generation, have written many poems. Probably my poet career is in succession to the ancient epic tradition of Central Asia. Manimbo, a series of character poems, contains 4,001 poems in 30 volumes, while the seven-volume epic Pektusan might take seven days to read completely. And I've come here across the Pacific working on another lengthy epic for the past 10 years. But opposite these very long poems, I also write very short poems. Many breathless poems only have one or two lines. 오늘 이 영광스러운 책의 전당 도서관 초청 신앙송에서 나는 시의 편으로 여러분을 만나려고 합니다. In my poetry reading today in this great hall of books, 
I would like to meet each one of you through a few of my poems. 나중에 감사할 <웃음> 예의를 미리 말하겠습니다. 초청을 해준 어, 이곳 도서관 어, 아시아부 책임자 또 시문학센터 소정 로버트 캐스퍼와 또 만화 예, 우리 예, 편집 책임자인 하대학 프랑크 스튜어트 교수에게 감사의 말씀 드립니다. 또내 오랜 친구인 브라더 안토니 안선재 수사의 여러 노구에도 감사하며 무엇보다도 시를 함께하기 위해서 이 방에 와 계신 여러분에게 감사합니다. Let me express my gratitude in advance. I want to thank especially Robert Casper, the head of the Poetry and Literature Center of the Library of Congress, and also Frank Stewart, the general editor of Manoa, for inviting me. I'm also, he says, grateful to me, Brother Anthony, for all his efforts, and above all to uh, everyone who's come here this evening to share poetry together. 나는 미국의 이 의회 의사당에 대한 호기심은 별로 없습니다. 그러나 이 도서관, 의회 도서관의 귀중한 책 속에 잠겨 있는 이 지상의 양식의 호기심은 뜨겁습니다. 나의 시도 이런 책들의 영혼과 동행하기를 바랍니다. I don't have so much curiosity about the capital itself, but I'm passionately curious about all the provisions of the planet contained in the precious volumes of this Library of Congress. So I hope that my poems too tonight will accompany the souls of all those books. Thank you. Uh, So now we will start reading. And the first poems are going to come from the uh, volume Untitled Poems. And Cohen will explain what that's about. The collection, Untitled Poems, the most recent collection then, includes 607 poems in some 1,000 pages, uh, thick enough to be used as a small pillow. Three years ago, I lived in Venice for four months, invited by a university there, and most of the poems emerged explosively at some moments during that time. <coughs> I termed it a meteor shower of poetry. Ten of the poems were included in the Manoa volume, The Colors of Dawn. I'm going to read some of them now, and uh, Frank Stewart will read the English uh, after each of the poems. 한심하구나, 지상의 일만 년, 해답들, 답들. 거부하라, 돌로, 동굴로. 사절하라, 번개로, 별빛으로. 고민하라 썩은 웅덩이로 흉터들 빛나는 나체로 다음 날 대답할 수 없는 질문을 쏴라 태양 흑점으로 신봉사로 Untitled poem 140 How pitiful are the world's 10,000 years of answers and, and replies. Refuse them as a stone, as a cave. Reject them as lightning, as moonlight. Suffer them as a stagnant puddle, as a naked body with scars shining. 
The next day, shoot out questions that cannot be answered as a sunspot, as a blind father. Korogamio Purunun Nore Sayageso Pisan Mude Malgo Kukjang Malgo Cho Chichinun Pamkil Sonoshiso Yoroshiso Sro Tadogimio Sro Talemio Kanun Nore Sayageso Ideologi Kun Malgo Kunde Hengjinui Kun Malgo 저 아프리카 조상들의 후진 풍습으로 조금 남은 슬픈 맨발의 밤길 노래 있어야겠소. 애도이듯 축하이듯 애절하디 애절한 기원이듯 백만 년 이어온 주문이듯 조상의 계시며 나 자신의 것인 강이면서 세민 그런 노래 함께 걸어가는 길의 노래 있어야겠소. 어쩌다 먼 마을에서 잡는 이들이 그 노래 소리에 깨어나 한동안 눈 감은 채 새로 잠 기다리는 동안 들려주며 갈 노래 있어야겠소. 벌레들, 별들. 죽은 넋들도 마음속에 담은 걸어가는 노래 있어야겠소. 서서 부르는 노래 저쪽에서 술집에서 부르는 취흥 도도의 힘찬 노래 이쪽에서 낮지도 높지도 않은 노래의 무거움이 새벽의 가벼운 먼동에 닿는 노래 있어야겠소. 걸어가는 노래 있어야 겠소. 남은 날이면 남은 날이면 더할 나위 없이 그 노래로 걸어가야 겠소. Untitled poem 148. We need a song to sing while walking along. We need a song. Not a song on some extravagant stage or in a theater, but three or four of us, several of us, singing together, comforting each other, consoling each other on a weary night road. We need a song, not the ideological kind, not the military march kind, but a sad song to sing as we walk along barefoot at night a little remainder of an old-fashioned custom from our African ancestors. We need a song for the road. We need a song we sing walking together, a song like lamenting, like congratulating, like praying most dolefully, a song of my ancestors and a song of my own, an incantation transmitted over a million years, a song that is a river and also a fountain. We need a song which those who were sleeping in some distant village wake up with and listen to with closed eyes while waiting for a new sleep to come. We need a song, a walking song, that insects, stars, and dead souls too cherish. We need a song, a song whose weight neither low nor high, reaches the light of dawn at daybreak. On that side of the song, people sing standing. On this side of the song, people sing in a bar, convivially, vigorously. I will live as a walking song. I will walk along as that song. With nothing more, I want for the remaining days, if there are days remaining. Alpusu Namul Duga Dorel Bogo Katanga Dorunja Shin Makalipit Namuridaga Chongo Sek 
낯선 젊은 사돈의 안색인 강물에다가 바사에 가라. 세상은 미안해할 마음 하나 없이 바쁘기만 하더구나. 바다에 가면 너 자신의 색 없이도 구름이 물들여주고 하늘이 물들여주고 지는 해의 웅장한 힘이 온통 불바다 이루어주느니라. 거기가 몇 해쯤 추억 늘어지도록 살고 지고. Untitled poem 179. Stream in the Alps, who would see you on their way? Stay all on your own, a stream with the color of spoiled makogli, then a river like a slate gray complexion of an unfamiliar youthful in law, then go to the sea. The world is simply busy having no moment to feel sorry. When you reach the sea, even if you have no color of your own, the clouds will dye you, the sky will dye you, the majestic power of the setting sun will turn you into a sea of fire. There, enjoy living several years, letting everything go. My faith is this. 아침 이슬을 믿는다. 며칠 뒤에 비를 믿는다. 바람을 믿는다. 바람에 실려오는 똥 냄새를 믿는다. 깡패들의 밤을 믿는다. 진리를 믿는 것이 아니라 진리가 변하는 것을 믿는다. 이제 우주의 완성인 나의 의의로 믿을 것이 전혀 없다는 것을 믿는다. 나의 신앙은 또 무엇이다. Untitled poem 193 These are my beliefs. I believe in morning dew. I believe in the rain that will come a few days later. I believe in the wind. I believe in the smell of shit, born on the wind. I believe in gangsters' nights. I believe not in truth, but in the fact that the truth changes. Now, with my skepticism, I believe that there's nothing at all to believe in. My belief is something else again. <웃음> 생주가 소쩍새 소리를 듣는다. 낮에 할일 없는 개가 송아지 울음 소리를 듣는다. 내가 일그루족의 말을 듣는다. 칭하이호 서쪽 기슭 그 무한의 곳에서 멀리 멀리 뜻 따위는 사라지고 오직 소리만 남아있다. 내가 한족의 중국어를 듣는다. 내가 영어를 듣는다. 영국 영어와 캐리포니아 영어를 각각 듣는다. 음이 무효의 경지로 오직 소리의 신성만이 남아있다. 음이들이여 해석들이여 이 행성의 재앙인 진리들이여 그동안에 몇 천년 수고 많았다. 이제 가라. 잘 가라. 나는 그대의 말을 밤기러기 소리로 듣는다. 내 말을 달팽이와 나비가 듣듯이 오직 소리의 화석으로 듣는다. 뜻 없는 기억 니은 지긋들 어여 오요 우유들이여 
그분의 현실이요 소리요. Untitled poem 201. A mouse listens to a scop's owl's cry. By day, a dog with nothing else to do listens to a calf lowing. I listen to ogres talking from far away, far away, far away, from that unbounded place on the western shore of Qinghai Lake. Meaning having vanished, only the sounds remain. I listen to ethnic Koreans, Chinese. I listen to English. I listen to British English and Californian English, respectively. <laughs> In the state where meaning is nullified, only the sacredness of sound remains. Meanings, interpretations, truths that are this planet's catastrophes. You've worked hard for thousands of years. Now be off with you. Farewell. I listen to your words as the call of a goose by night, only as the fossils of sounds, as a snail or a butterfly listens to my words, meaningless consonants and vowels, reality in the origin, sounds. 오늘의 시간은 저리 느리고 가는 시간은 이리 빠르구나. 묘지들, 묘지야 빗돌들, 비 맞으며 두른 거리는구나. 다음 날 햇볕과 젖은 것들 입 다물고 마르는구나. 하늘조차 괜히 푸르구나. 가는 시간 사라지고 오는 시간 아직 오지 않는구나. 이런 날의 산 것들 올때갈때 없구나. 아무래도 시간은 인간의 것이 아니구나. Untitled poem 215. Time coming is that slow. Time going is this fast. Graves and memorial stones in front of graves murmur, once exposed to rain. The next day when sunshine comes, all that was wet dries out, shuts up. Even the sky is blue for no reason. Time going vanishes. Time coming has not yet come. Living things on such a day have nowhere to go and to come. After all, time does not belong to humans. Hegatunda. 오늘도 싸우리라 오늘도 싸움에 치리라 Number 485 The sun is rising Today too I will fight Today too I will lose the fight <laughs> That's the end of the first section the untitled poems And now uh, Cohen and I will read uh, ten short songs from a collection called Poetry Left Behind to go on she. Kotonal sup kalsumori chemdumori che kishil hanajal ene tadumko in the At the edge of a reed field, mallard ducks about to leave are pluming their feathers a while. Chun parami noran hepyari somtal kilsushio nonanda. Pyari tari ore kanulda. A cold wind stirs the yellow feathers of baby chicks. 
chick's legs stay thin for a long time. Panzogi Nolsegatun Kungsori Trusta Chumunzani Kunja Nebun Suringa Puongi Duni Kudi Kajasta. A sound thump was heard like the sound of a huge rock being laid flat. Was that a sound the darkening mountain made by itself? After that, the owl's eyes became bigger. Pyongdun mal kuranchi anko kukkaji soinun magukane bondung pichiorinda kin pamiyotta kin pamiyotta. In a stable where to the bitter end a sick horse refused to kneel down. A faint light of dawn is spreading. It was a long night, a long night. Harabajiga tiyum tiyum marasa, kalkirun balda, sadruji margo. Grandfather spoke brokenly. You have a long way to go. Don't hurry. Go plodding along like an ox and rest once in a while. Do I have the love of one person that can wash away the hatred of several people? I had been opening an umbrella, but I closed it again and just welcomed the rain. I asked a child, do you want to be a beggar or a thief? And the child asked, why, is there nothing but that in this world? Indeed so. There is only the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea in this world. Let go of the things you have spent 30 years shouting for. Among them, justice, let it go forever. Manya, 10년, 30년, 또는 60년, 이런 세월이 무상하지 않다면, Ten years, thirty years, or fifty years, if such time spans were not transient, if such life spans were not transient, humans would have become so much more barbarous. Oh, long live sublime transience. 오늘이 하찮은 날일지라도 누가 태어나는 날이고 누가 떠나는 날이다. 누가 기다리는 날이다. 오늘도 
해지기 전 낙조 응원하여라. Today may be a trivial day. It's the day someone is being born. The day someone is leaving. The day someone is waiting. Today too. May the glow of the setting sun be glorious. 무거운 시 그럴 수 있다면 정령 그럴 수만 있다면 갓난아기로 돌아가 어머니의 자궁 속으로부터 다시 시작하고 싶을 때가 왜 없으리 삶은 저 혼자서 늘 다음의 파도 소리를 들어야 한다. 그렇다고 가던 길 돌아서지 말아야겠지. 그동안 떠돈 세월의 조각들 여기저기 빨래처럼 펄럭이누나. 가난할 때는 눈물마저 모자랐다. 어느 밤은 살려가는 화톱불의 추운 등 쪼이다가 허럽게 돌아서 가슴 쪼였다. 또 어느 밤은 그저 어둠 속 온몸 다 얼어들며 털덜덜 떨었다. 수많은 날들 오늘이 될 때마다 나는 곧잘 뒷자리의 손님이었다. 저물역 산들은 첩첩하고 가야 할길 온길보다 아득하더라. 바람 불더라. 바람 불더라. 슬픔은 끝까지 팔고 사는 것이 아닐진데 저만치 등불 하나가 그렇게 슬퍼하라. 두고 온 것, 무엇이 있으려만, 무엇인가 두고 온 것, 머물던 자리를 어서서 털고 일어선다. 물한개 거치는 더해 태안 반도 그 선물이 있지인가 그것이 어느 시절 울부짖던 넋인가 혹은 신인가 These are poems from the collection uh, First Person Sorrowful which we'll find outside poems written after the year 2000 <coughs> Poetry left behind if it's possible, if it's really possible, why should there not be times when we start over again from our mother's womb as if newborn? Life always has to listen alone to the sound of the next wave. Still, we should not turn back from the road once taken Tatters of the years while I wandered about are flapping here and there like laundry. When I was poor, even tears were lacking. Some nights I warmed my cold back at a dwindling bonfire, then turning cheerlessly warmed my breast. Some other nights I simply froze and shuddered trembling. When never countless tomorrows become today, I was often a stranger in a back seat. At dusk, the mountains were so deep that the road I had to take seemed longer than that which I had taken. The wind blew, blew. Was that a spirit howling once or poetry? Sorrow is never something we sell or buy. So be sorrowful as a lamp standing far beyond. There should be nothing that I have left, but feeling there was something I had left behind as fog was lifting, I rose quickly from the spot where I had been staying, likely on the west coast, near the outermost tip of the Tayan Peninsula. Was that a soul howling? at some period of my life, or poetry.
백색의 노래 한 생에는 다른 생애를 꿈꾼다 늦밤 하얀 백꽃들 설레며 달을 기다린다 한 생에는 다른 생애를 담는다 여름밤 빼밀꽃밥 달을 기다린다 한 생에는 다른 생애를 파묻는다 겨울이다 이제 펑펑 내린 눈들 온몸으로 달을 기다린다 돌멩이를 던진다 돌멩이는 눈 속에 파묻혀 다른 생애를 시작한다 이윽고 달 떴다 Song of White One life dreams of another life Late spring, white pear blossoms, their hearts throbbing, await the moon. One life resembles another life. In the summer night, the field of buckwheat flowers awaits the moon. One life inhumes another life. It's winter. The snow that fell heavily yesterday awaits the moon with all its heart. I throw a stone, buried in the snow, it begins another life. Finally, the moon rises. O m o n i o n a j u m o n i h u n j a k a m o t u r i n d t 도란도란 말소리 혹은 어느 소설 읽다가 그 소설 속 버림받은 여자의 울음소리 때때로 이런 것이 사람의 어머니 아니리요 고대인도 아리안 마야 부인만이 성모 마리아만이 어찌 어머니이리요 또한 해진 뒤 어둑발 다 더듬어도 돌아올 자식 없이도 어찌 어머니 아니리요. Mother, a woman walking alone murmurs as though she has a companion. A woman reading a novel weeps with the weeping of a woman abandoned in the novel. Isn't such a woman at times also someone's mother? How can the Lady Maya of ancient India alone or the Virgin Mary alone be a mother? And a woman who has no child yet can search through the darkness after sunset Isn't she also a mother? 어, 지금부터 읽을 시인은 어, 유엔이 에, 이 지구상에서 인간이 점점 더 행복과 먼 삶을 살고 있어서 행복을 증진시켜야겠다고 여겨서 국제 행복의 날을 지난해 제정했습니다. 그때 유엔 작가 협회에서 행복 시집을 기획했는데 50개국 시인 중에 나에게도 어, 부탁이 와서 어, 쓴 시입니다. <웃음> The United Nations some years back reckoned that it should promote happiness. Uh, seeing that hap- humanity was living further and further away from happiness. And so they established Happiness Day. And they commissioned 50 of the world's poets, including myself, to write poems on the topic of happiness. h e n o k y o h o j a t a y a r a d u g a a l a 시베리아에서 오세아니아까지 
몇날 며칠 밤으로 낮으로 한때거리 철새들 절망 없이 하늘 건너간다. 누가 알랴 저 유라시아 선역께서 동아시아까지 동아시아 지나 알류샨 열도 및 북태평양까지 자전의 행성 편서풍 쉬지 않고 건너간다. 누가 알랴 세상의 바다 해류 조류 무릅쓰고 몇년 뒤에 먼 고향 한 생애를 바치는 늙은 연어떼들 물속으로 건너간다. 누가 알랴 한반도 한때기 밭두렁 해 뜨고 해지는 내내 밭 일손 놓지 않는 둥급은 남경내 안악내의 삶이 늙은 세월을 건너간다. 누가 알랴 누가 알랴 행복이란 고단한 삶과 죽음 말고 다른 곳에 없다는 것 정작 행복의 찬란은 모른다. 누가 알랴 누가 알랴 행복이여 이토록 The indistinct happiness. Who would know? Flocks of migrant birds fly across the sky with no despair by day, by night, from Siberia to Oceania. Who would know? The revolving planets, westerly winds blow past with no rest. From the western part of Eurasia to East Asia, beyond East Asia, to the North Pacific, below the Aleutian Islands. Who would know? Shoals of old salmon swim across the water, braving the ocean tides and currents, devoting their lives to the faraway home they left years before. Who would know? The lives of bent old men and old women pass through blind time as they work on scraps of paddy field in the Korean Peninsula from sunrise to sunset. Who would know? Who would know? Happiness does not exist elsewhere apart from wearisome life and death. The moment of happiness cannot be known. Who would know? Who would know? Be thus indistinct happiness. Ku sok sagim piga oda chek sang ape an. 가만히 책상이 말하다 나는 일찍이 꽃이었고 잎이었다 조리기였다 나는 사막 저쪽 우아스까지 뻗어간 땅속의 긴 불이었다 책상 유의 쇠토막이 말하다 나는 달밤에 혼자 울부짖는 늑대의 목젖이었다 비가 그치다 밖으로 나가다 
흠뻑 젖은 불이 나에게 말하다. 나는 일찍이 너희들의 희로 애락이었다. 너희들의 삶이 었고 도래였다. 너희들의 꿈속이었다. 이제 내가 말하다. 책상에게, 쇠에게, 흙에게 나는 일찍이 너였다. 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 지금 나는 너이고 너이다. The whisper. Rain falls. I sit at my desk, and the desk speaks softly. Once I was a flower, was a leaf, was a stalk. I was a long root beneath the ground, stretching as far as yon desert oasis. A scrap of iron on the desk speaks. I was the uvula of a stillness howling alone on moonlight nights. The rain stops. I go outside. Grass thoroughly soaked speaks to me. Once I was your joy and sorrow. I was your history and songs. Now I speak to desk, to iron, and to earth. Once I was you, was you, was you. Now I am you. I am you. <웃음> 지금 읽으신 남아프리카 케이프타운에서 열린 제1회 국제 시 축제 초청 받아서 그때 남십자성을 보기 위해서 그먼 길을 갔었지요. 그때 시인 자신의 전기가 축제의 주제 시여서 쓴 작품입니다. 어느 전기. In 2013, I was invited to the first international poetry festival to be held in Cape Town in South Africa. And I set out on that uh, long journey, looking forward to seeing the Southern Cross in the sky. And one of the themes of the festival was the poet's own biography. And so I wrote this poem. 있을 수도 있고 없을 수도 있는 한 삶의 나비로 태어났다. 빛 앞에서 아주 작은 눈이 떴다. 어둠 쪽에서 아주 얇은 날개가 돋았다. 바다를 모르는 폭풍을 모르는 한 나비의 말이 나비는 언제나 망한 나라의 입새에 내려앉았다. 이쪽에서 저쪽으로 날아갔다. 불멸이 얼마나 허황한 것인가를 처음부터 알고 있는 듯 오직 위대한 것은 낙조뿐인 흘려해서 낮은 식민지 밤은 나의 조국이었다. 그런 밤에 금지된 모국어가 아무도 몰래 잠든 몸속에서 두런거렸다. 해방이 왔다. 모국어가 찬란했다. 전쟁이 왔다. 폐허에서 폐허의 죽음 사이에서 피 묻은 모국어가 살아남았다. 그 모국어로 노래했다. 나의 노래는 애도이고 나의 노래는 누구의 환생이었다. 
또한 나의 노래는 불멸이 아니라 소멸의 노래였다. 독재와 총 앞에 섰다. 나의 주술이 몇 번인가 갇혔다. 모순은 모순의 서사와 모순 거절의 서정을 낳았다. 아직도 지난 날의 어린 나비는 시장의 한 장소에서 다른 장소의 진실들을 꿈꾼다. 삶은 미완의 내면으로 떠돈다. 남은 꿈 하나, 먼 내일의 땅속 나비 화석은 노래 화석이기를. Biography. I was born as a butterfly with a life which might or might not have existed. Very small eyes open to the light in the darkness. Very thin wings emerged. Knowing nothing like the sea, like storms, that one butterfly always alighted on the leaves of an overthrown nation. It flew from here, there. It was as if somebody knew from the start how absurd immortality is in the fields where sunset alone was great. Day was a colonized land. Night was my fatherland. In those nights, my forbidden mother tongue murmured, unnoticed by any, inside my sleeping body. Liberation came. My mother tongue was splendid. War came. Among the ruins, between the corpses in the ruins, my blood-stained mother tongue survived. I sang in that mother tongue. My song was a mourning. My song was someone's resurrection. And my song was a song of extinction, not immortality. I stood before dictatorship and guns. My incantation was several times imprisoned. Contradiction gave birth to narratives of contradiction and lyrics rejecting contradiction. Still, that baby butterfly of days long ago is dreaming at one place on earth of the truths of other places. Life goes wandering on, inwardly unfinished. One dream remains. May the fossilized butterfly underground in some distant future, be a fossilized song. Lassa에서 해발 사천 미터 턱 미칩니다. 티베트라사 창포강 물살이 산업계 달립니다. 모자 벗어 던지면 이내 보이지 않습니다. 돌아서서 숨결을 반숨결쯤으로 아낍니다. 그라싸 구시가 팔각거리 한 바퀴 느린 물레로 돕니다. 웬 거지들이 흠겹게 모여드는지 그 가운데 늙은 거지 다 쭈그러져 누런 이빨 두억에 남은 것으로 이희하고 웃어 보이다가 딱 한마디 한푼 줍쇼 따위가 아니라 얼읍쇼 얼읍쇼 그런 시끌렁한 구걸이 아니라 얼읍쇼 얼읍쇼 당신께서 가장 높으십니다. 이말 한마디였습니다. 거두절미하고 놀랐습니다. 깜짝 놀랐습니다. 내 어설픈 뜨내기 넋이 거기서 꽉 막혀 놀라 깨어나 버렸습니다. 어제도 오늘도 또 내일도 이런 구걸 인사는 없겠습니다. 이승의 어둠에서도 이런 구걸은 해당초 없겠습니다. 내가 온 곳, 또 내가 갈 곳, 
저 사천 미터 아래의 우리의 벼락 세상에서 누가 나더러 당신께서 가장 높으시다고 맨손으로 치겨 세우겠습니까? 여기 이러니 턱도 없는 이 존대를 받고 황은망극하여 어찌 한 푼의 적선으로 답하겠습니까? 그래서 모태동 초상이 박힌 아주 큰 집회 한 장을 얼른 드리고 그곳을 떠나버렸습니다. 생각한데 나 또한 거지 중에 상거지임에 틀림없습니다. 시의 한 구절을 시의 한 구절과 한 구절 사이의 비인들을 그제도 이튿날에도 얻어보려고 안 나오는 젖바라대며 이 꼭지 첫 꼭지 배고픈 아기 주둥이로 파고들기를 받아하지 않았습니다. 그러므로 이 성의 어느 기석, 저 성의 어느 기석, 아니 밑도 끝도 모르는 우주무궁의 어느 간역에 대고 한마디 말씀이여 한마디 말씀과 말씀 사이 지연이시여 애면 글면 그걸 해오기를 언 60년에 이르렀습니다. 한마디 말씀의 귀신들이여 당신께서 가장 높으십니다. 이제 나도 이런 국어로의 경지 함부로 터득하고 싶습니다. 다만 내 행복은 도둑이 안전한 것. 내 행복은 언제까지나 거지라는 것. 이것뿐입니다. 당신께서 가장 높으십니다. In Lhasa, Tibet, I was... At an altitude of some 4,000 meters, the Tsangbo River, sped by fiercely a hat thrown in, would vanish in a flash. Turning round, I slowed my breathing by half. Following the octagonal path through Lhasa's old city, I turned like a slow spinning wheel. Such a crowd of beggars gathered and so jubilant. Among them was one old beggar, all wrinkles and just two yellow teeth. He laughed like a fool and said only one thing. Not got a few pennies, nothing like that. My goodness, my goodness, not that kind of dull begging. My goodness, my goodness, but you're the highest. Just that one phrase. In a word, I was astounded, really astounded. My poor wandering soul was brought to a full stop, awakened in amazement. Yesterday, today, or tomorrow, Never was there or will there be such a way of begging. No such begging would be plausible anywhere else, any time. In the place I've come to, in the places I'll go back to, in the world of thunder and lightning, 4,000 meters below, who would ever pay tribute to me with empty hands saying, You're the highest. Humbled by such extravagant respect, how could I respond with a few pennies? So I fumbled to give him a banknote with a portrait of Mao on it and made my escape. On reflection like him, I am, doubtless, the most wretched of beggars. Days passed, and yesterday too, in order to lay my hands on a single line of poetry and also on that space between the lines, I never stopped sucking for milk that would not come like a hungry baby thrusting its lips against every breast in sight. It's been 50 years since I first begged anxiously for one word, the truest word between words, from some valley in this world, from some slope in the world beyond, or from some edge of the infinite fathomless universe. The spirit of one word you're the highest. Dare I now hope to rise to that peak of begging? Only my happiness is I'm no thief. My unhappiness that I'm forever a beggar. That's all. You are the highest. <laughs> uh, 
2005년 독일 프랑크푸르트 북부에서 한국이 주빈국이었을 때 나는 해방연설을 했습니다. 그때 주요 독일의 신문에서 나에게 시한 편을 써달라고 청탁을 했었죠. 그 시는 일면 정중앙에 독일어 번역과 나의 육필 한글이 함께 실렸습니다. 그 시를 읽겠습니다. So in 2005, Korea was the guest of honor at the Frankfurt Book Fair, and I was asked to make a keynote speech at the opening ceremony, and I was also asked by one of the major daily newspapers in Germany to write a poem for them. And it was presented right in the center of the first page in German and in Korean in my own handwriting. And that's the poem I'll read now. <laughs> 슬프다 깨달음은 어느새 무슨 일인가 지난 세기 초 혁명 뒤 소비에트 시인들은 우리들을 우리들이라고만 말하기로 하였다 우리들이라고만 시인 자신을 부르기로 하였다 황홀하였다 그 결정은 폭설 때문에 그리 나가지 못한 채방 안에 서성거릴 때도 유효하였다 저 혼자 우리들 우리들이라고 맹세하였다. 거울 저쪽에서 나는 어디론가 사라졌다. 어느 화창한 날 뛰쳐나온 마야콥스키도 우리들 우리들이라고 외치고 외치고 외쳤다. 그는 그리의 시인이었다. 어디에도 나는 허용되지 않았다. 나는 죄악이었다. 우리들, 우리들 오직 그것만이 주문의 권력이 되었다. 차츰 하늘의 저기압이 눌러댔다. 여름 꽃들 눈의 짓밟혔다. 혁명을, 혁명을 먹었다. 모든 아이들의 공에서 바람이 빠져 나갔다. 우리들도 우리들도 평평한 대기 속에서 바람이 빠져 나갔다. 누가 대담하게 나는 사랑한다라고 썼으나 아직 우리들은 사랑한다라고 읽는 습관이 남아 있었다. 겨울론이 다 녹지 않았다. 부문들 불안하다. 지난 세기 말 소비트가 죽었다. 바르샤바 조약 국가들이 하나 하나 떨어져 나갔다. 그 이래 시인들에게 온통 나뿐이다. 나로 시작해서 나로 하루가 저물어 간다. 나 이유는 아무것도 없다. 신도 나의 다른 이름이었다. 오늘 환 태평양, 환 태서양, 우리와 나의 유령들을 무한히 파도에 붙어버린다. 누가 태어날 것인가? 우리도 아닌, 나도 아닌, 누가 태어날 것인가? 파도는 파도의 무덤이고, First person sorrowful, I am sad. Enlightenment soon becomes a contradiction. After the revolution, early last century, the Soviet poets decided they would only say we. They decided they would only call themselves we. They were enchanted. Their decision held even when they could not go out into the streets, even when they lingered indoors due to heavy blizzards. They took oaths saying, we, by themselves. I had disappeared somewhere deep in the looking glass. Mayakovsky, to one bright sunny day, dashed out shouting and shouting, we, he was a poet of the street. I 
was not allowed anywhere. I was wicked. We, we that alone had incantatory power. Little by little, a low pressure front settled in. Summer flowers kept being trampled. Revolution devoured revolution. The air went out of every child's bowl. And likewise, the taut round atmosphere of we slowly went flat. Someone boldly wrote, I am in love. But still, as long the custom, it was read as we are in love. Winter snows had not all melted. Spring is always uncertain. Late last century, the Soviet Union disappeared. Countries dropped out of the Warsaw Pact one after another. And since then, poets have nothing but I. Starting with I, they end the day with I. There is nothing except I. God too, is another name for I. Today, I bury the ghosts of we and I in the endless waves of the Pacific Rim. Who will be born? Who will be born? Neither we nor I. Each wave is one wave's grave, another wave's womb. Uh, 아리랑은 한국에서는 국가보다 더 널리 더 자주 부르는 그런 노래이지요. 우리가 나라를 잃어서 다 버리고 조국을 떠나는 이산의 삶을 살게 되었을 때도 유일하게 가져간 게 조성의 제사 날과 그리고 아리랑이라는 이 노래였지요. So, <coughs> Arirang, this poem is called Arirang, uh, and Arirang, Arirang is a Korean song. It's a national song. In Korea, it's more widely loved and probably more often sung than the <coughs> official national anthem. And after Koreans had lost their nation and everything with it, and many then left for a life elsewhere, uh, the only things they took with them were the dates of their ancestors' death anniversaries, and this song. So I'm going to read it first in English, and then go and uh, read in Korean. Arirang. One day in 1937, Koreans living in far eastern Siberia were abruptly loaded onto freight trains on the Trans-Siberian Railway, were carried for ten days, a fortnight along the shore of Lake Baikal and beyond. Five thousand of them. And as people died one by one, their bodies were thrown out along the way. Where on earth are they now? Reaching the barren land of Alma Ata, they were unloaded. You, Kariskis, live here. Then the empty trains left. The Ten Chan mountain range far to the south was white with snow. Everywhere before and behind was all bare, weedy land. And here they began to construct dugouts, to place cooking pots, to live in the midst of death. And sixty such harsh years passed. A second generation was born, a third. Their children took names like Natalia Kim. Ilyich Pak. One of them, called Anatoly Khan, 11 years old. He was good at playing the balalaika. One day, he was given the musical score of Arirang. He scanned it once and began to play and sing. And how amazing. As the child sang, he found he'd never felt such deep sorrow. Tears rose in his eyes. Never before had he felt such deep sorrow. It was the first time he'd ever sung Arirang, yet 
All his ancestors' grief was in it, from which the child's tears could never be far removed. Is that blood? Or a song? Or what? Ariran, Ariran, Araio. Ariran. 1937년 어느 날 연해주 고려 사람들 당장 화물차에 실려 시베리아 철도에 실려 바이칼 호수 끼고 열리고 부름이고 가다가 5천여 명 하나하나 죽어가면서 그 송장 내버리면서 가다가 이게 어디란 말인가 알마타 황야에 이르러 너희들 까레스키 여기서 살든지 죽든지 하라 하고 다 내버리고 빈 화물차 떠나버렸다. 멀리 남쪽으로 천산산맥 하얀 눈 쌓였다. 앞과 뒤 몽땅 맨땅 풀밭 여기에 운막 짓고 솟단지 걸어 죽어가며 죽어가며 살기 시작하였다. 그런 모진 세월 60년 지나 2세, 3세 어린이 김나달리야 박일리일치 그 가운데 아나톨리 강 나이 열한 살 바라라이카 잘 뜯어 거기다가 악보 아리랑을 주었더니 한번 훑어보고 아리랑 아리랑 아라리오 그 곡을 뜯어 노래하는데 놀라워라 그 아이의 노래 이제까지 이런 슬픔 없었다 눈에 눈물 고여 이제까지 이런 슬픔 없었다 참 푸르는 아리랑인데 모르는 아리랑인데 그 노래 가운데 조상 태대의 온갖 슬픔 다 들어 그것과 동떨어 질수 없는 이 어린아이의 눈물 이것이 피인가 노래인가 무엇인가 아리랑 아리랑 아라리오 <웃음> 아리랑 아리랑 아라리오 아리랑 구해로 넘어간다 Frank is going to ask one or two questions, and um, I will try to interpret. 
and Cohen will answer, and I will try to interpret. Thank you, thank you. Um, I think all of us would wonder how many Ko'uns are there? There seem to be too many to be in one person. <laughs> Can he please talk about how he manages to be so many people? Ko'un yor bun in Navajo. Ko'un hanaman al go yor shisa. Miam miam ko'un in Nunga. Kriko ta otuke irke hanko han ingan roso isusu in Nunga. Eh, Alimida, Sashirun, Tapuniaida, Boden ingan hana hananun, hanaga anisio. I'm not the only one. Everybody, there's nobody, in fact, is just one person. There's I, I, alone. There's no need for this name, Koun. Because I'm just the one. 그러나 나는 나의 딸의 아버지죠. Of course I'm my daughter's father. 또내 아내 남편입니다. And my wife's husband. 내 친구의 친구입니다. My friend's friend. 벌써 나는 여러 개입니다. 응? 벌써 여러 개. Yeah, yeah, I have many friends. <웃음> 벌써 안선재 친구입니다. I'm friend of Anzonje, me. 저 하와이 대학 교수와도 친구입니다. And a friend of Frank. Hi. 나는 아주 복잡합니다. I'm very complex. <웃음> 아, 이런 뜻도 하나 있고요. That's one way of saying. 어, 나는 내 문학이 결코 한 사람이 이룰 수 있는 문학이 아닙니다. My writing is perhaps yes, not just one person's writing. 구체적으로 말하지요. Uh, practically speaking, 나는 책상이 우선 세 개입니다. Hmm? 책상이 세 개. I I have three desks in my study. Uh, 여기서는 시를 쓰고, hmm? poetry. 여기서는 서사시를 쓰고, and uh, long extended uh, epics. 여기서는 또 산문을 씁니다. And here prose. I write in different places. 필요할 때는 또 책상이 또 생기죠. And sometimes there are additional desks. <웃음> 어, 한국의 목수 아주 유명한 목수가 저의 그런 것을 알고 책상을 하나 짜줬습니다. Uh, a very famous carpenter in Korea made desks for me. 그거는 저기서부터 여기까지 길지요. Very very long desk. <웃음> 그러면 의자만 몇개 놓으면 됩니다. I all these different chairs so I can sit in different places. 그러니까 내 문학은 혼자가 아니고 여러 시지요. So my writing is not single, it's plural, it's multiple. 그것뿐이 아니고 정말 진실로 나는 혼자가 아닙니다. And certainly I'm not alone one. 나는 이 방에 있는 여러분의 요소를 우주에서 얻어서 나를 만들어 준 것입니다. 응? 우주에 있는 요소가 와서 나를 만들어 준 것이다. 우주에 우주에서 이 코스모스에서 yeah. 어, 여러 먼지, 티끌 이런 게 나를 만들어. I'm composed of dust from the cosmos, from the whole cosmic dust. 어, 나는 천왕성이고, 나는 토성이고, 나는 또 금성이고, 나는 화성이고, 또 나는 저 오세네에서도 왔고. 어 아메리카에서도 왔고 사방에서 만들어졌죠. Yeah, from all these different stars and planets and from all these different countries and peoples and cultures everything all together make me up. 다만 편법을 위해서 한국의 한국인 한국의 신일 뿐입니다. But it's true I am a Korean poet. <웃음> 어, 나는 아주 복잡합니다. I'm very complex. 우리들은 단순할 수한 번도 하나로 있을 수가 없습니다. It's impossible. Any, nobody can be single and simple. 이 세상에는 하나는 존재하지 않습니다. One doesn't really exist in this world. 우리들의 이 위대한 복수를 위하여 우리 만세 부릅시다. 
Uh, so this plurality we should ac acclaim and, and be grateful for. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.